Now I'd like to welcome Dr. Steve Constantino to the stage. Dr. Constantino is a superintendent in Williamsburg, James City County, and one of the nation's most sought after speakers and, and thought leaders in the field of, of engaging families in education due to his unique uh, success, in the practical application of, of family engagement research. We're just thrilled to have Steve on our committee uh, and on our task force. So Steve, we look forward to hearing from you this morning. Please give him a big hand, folks. Good morning, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here this morning and a pleasure to share with you a topic uh, that I think is very important and sometimes uh, underutilized as a strategy in advancing the achievement of all students. Um, when I, I put the presentation and went through it last night and it really is a very in-depth three and a half hour presentation for you this morning, um, uh, Emily reminded me I had 30 minutes so this is what we're going to try to do. I'm going to tell you what we're going to try to do, then we're going to try to do it and then we'll see how well I did. Uh, we'll start with a little bit of an of a anticipatory set uh, to see where we all are with this topic, give you just enough research to make this legitimate, uh, and then get to some perhaps some practices that we know from research and practice around the country have been extremely successful, especially in those schools that find themselves in challenging environments. Uh, the, the, so the very first thing I want to do is really audience participation. I won't have you come up individually to the microphone. I really need you to work together uh, and we'll start with a pretest because that's that's what we do. We test. Um, I'm going to to uh, ask you two questions. Uh, you're going to shout out the answers, whatever the answer you think it is, and that's fine. If it's different between you and the person sitting next to you, that's not a problem. We we need to get a base some baseline data before we start the presentation today. So I'll give you a scenario. When I point to you, please just shout out whatever you think the answer is. Somewhere this evening in your community, a family finds themselves home for dinner all at the same time. There's no traffic or practices or meetings or late work or second jobs or all of the things that prevent families from having dinner together are not there. Suddenly they're together. Mom is extremely excited that she gets to have dinner, prepare dinner for her family. She skips the microwave, goes directly to the George Foreman. It's a very special night. Uh, while mom is busy fixing dinner, dad wants to engage in a conversation with his children about school. And so he looks at his children and he asks them this question. What did you do in school today? I love working with gifted people. Uh, it's only one question. There's a second question. The second question, uh, dad looks for support from mom, of course, gets none. Talk to the hand. You don't hear me asking the kids stupid questions. Uh, dad once again asks the children, do you have any homework? So uh, raise your hand if you have children of your own. Interesting. Um, I have conducted that test on four different continents, and nobody has ever gotten that question wrong, except for one lady in Oklahoma, and that's another story. Um, I want you to consider this. In 30 minutes, the best we can do this morning is to get you to consider some things, perhaps differently when you walk out than you did when you walked in. Everybody in this room is somehow connected to education. And the reason that you knew the answers to those questions is because you've asked your own children those questions. And so one of the ideas that I want to start with today that I'd like you to ponder as we go through this presentation is, if those are the very best questions that you can ask your own children, what hope do families have who don't know what you know? The answer is none. And so there is a role for hope. We heard that word earlier this morning, and I've been guilty of saying that hope is not a strategy, but there still is a role for hope. And it is especially true with uh, families, and it is, it is especially true with families who find themselves in challenging situations. Let me start with an idea. Um, I said this at VSBA, and, and uh, it's, it's a horribly poor form to quote yourself, so let me quote myself. Uh, if we as educators could successfully teach all children by ourselves, then it seems to me we have already done so. Uh, we haven't. We've never been successful at educating successfully all of the children. The achievement gaps have been alive and well for as long as I have been in this business, and we have been searching for years and years and years to find these holy grail answers, and this conference is really uh, ground zero, in my opinion, of those answers. And one of the things that I want to impress upon you today is that family engagement is a variable. It is one of those answers, and it is most often overlooked. It is, it is often seen as something to do when we're finished doing everything else, or if we have time, we can engage families. I would, I would suggest to you today that you reconsider where it is in the hierarchy of what's important to you in your school division. 
consider this, that, that families, we know this from research, families are the first and most influential teachers of their children, period. You'll notice that I didn't say that families are the first and best teachers of their children, but they are the most influential teachers of their children. And so what would happen then if you could start to harness some of that influence and use it to move your schools and your communities along with the success that you, that you have, the desired success that you have for all of your students. That's really the role of family engagement. Um, it's been studied for, for more years than, than I can remember. The, the research comes out of Gordon's Head Start research. It's been going on for a, for a long, long time. Let me, uh, uh, another big idea that I want to share with you, and this is especially true in schools of challenging environments, and that is we have this idea that families, uh, especially socioeconomically disadvantaged families or families of color or special education, some special education families, all of those categories, uh, we have this idea that these families are apathetic. We do things for families and they don't attend. We have math night and we've done, we've worked all, all uh, month to create this wonderful math night and one of two things happens. One, three parents show up or you have a room full of parents, but it's, uh, they're the parents of the students who are doing just fine. They don't really need to be there. Well, how do you, how do you garner the support of the parents who didn't get there, the disengaged? And that's really what we're going to talk about uh, in, in the very brief time that we have this morning. But I put this giant uh, less than 1% up here because I want you to remember a couple of big ideas. Uh, if I'm really good today, by, by tomorrow you'll remember 25% of what I said. I hope this is in the 25%. And that is that the percentage of families who are truly apathetic toward their children's education is less than 1%. But if you go back to your school districts and you ask teachers what their perception of that, they will give you a much higher number. It's not true. There are reasons for disengagement. There are higher levels of disengagement, but apathy is not the reason. And if you could just fix that amongst the attitudes and amongst the perceptions of the people in your organization, you would start to see success uh, immediately. Uh, family engagement is not going to revolutionize. It's not going to fix everything overnight. It's a culture changing process. It's probably a years long process. But it starts with some very basic concepts. And there is a process to it. Uh, the other idea that I'd like to try to leave with you today is that we sometimes focus on family engagement as a series of events. Let's have a blank night. Let's have a blank day. Let's do a blank meeting. Those are wonderful things. Um, not so sure that they're going to garner the kind of engagement you're looking for, and that is, in a few minutes I'll show, show you, engagement that's tied to student learning. There's lots of different kinds of family engagement. We're interested today in the engagement that's tied to the learning of students. So what causes disengagement? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this very, very quickly uh, because there is a little bit of a science to it, and that is, you know, people have a negative, a negative experience. We all have negative experiences. Parents have negative experiences. Families have negative experiences. And what happens to them is that they begin to go into this mode of self-preservation. It's kind of us against them. The school has wronged them in some way. And it can be something as simple as, I didn't get the third grade teacher that I wanted. Um, everybody at the pool said I should get Mrs. Smith, and the letter came, and it was Mrs. Jones. Boom, a negative catalyst. How we respond and how we react to these thousands of things that happen every day uh, really start to speak to the degree to which we can engage families. People go into the self-preservation mode. From self-preservation, they isolate themselves. Isolation is the easiest way to protect yourself from danger. Uh, you've heard the term flight or fight. Flight is easier than flight. So once you isolate yourself from a situation, you know you have the situation, but you can't uh, resolve the situation, that begins to uh, create stress. Stress leads to anxiety. I often talk to principals about anxiety. Anxiety is a very real issue. I know it's a word that's overused in our society, and some people chuckle when they hear the word, but I've asked principals, have you ever gotten this phone call? Uh, you get a phone call from somebody that says, uh, I want, I'm a parent and I want to let you know that you have a problem at your school. And uh, okay, well, if it's just one, it's a pretty good day. What's the problem? Parent tells you what the problem is and then says, well, if you give me your name and phone number, I'll certainly look into it and I'll give you a call back. And the parent says, oh, I can't give you my name. I can't give you my name because if I give you my name, class, yeah, 
congratulations. Uh, that's a level of anxiety. If someone really thinks that you spend your entire day sitting around a table plotting retaliation against children, then they're suffering from a level of anxiety that probably doesn't exist. Now, I don't believe that you sit around tables plotting retaliation against children. You may have had a passing thought about retaliating against children, but generally speaking, I don't think educators do that. But there are people out there who truly believe that we do. And that's what happens, that's really this very, a very quick uh, cycle of anxiety. And of course, the biggest barrier that we have to family engagement is fear, their fear of us and our fear of them. I've been on a one-man crusade for about 20 years to bring this topic to the fore because I have, I have been involved in education for 34 years uh, and I watch the professional development programs that go through and I'm always amazed at how little attention is paid to this topic. Uh, we spend all of our professional development dollars on all of these things that are going to help our schools perform, yet we never consider spending time or resources or an energy on helping teachers be better communicators and build better relationships and build better trust with families. We, we always think that there's something more important. Well, we've got, to be, we've got to be better reading teachers. We've got to be better math teachers. We've got to get better at the SOLs. We've got to have, we have to be more data driven. We have to have PLCs. Absolutely. When are we going to do this? And did we ever consider that if, in fact, what research tells us is true, harnessing the power of family engagement is actually an extremely important variable in, in student learning? Um, these will come up by themselves. Here's the research portion. I'm going to take about 50 years of research and, and uh, uh, give it to you in about 35 seconds. Um, if you want to Google parent involvement or family engagement, please do. If you want to Google Scholar it, you can. You'll see uh, thousands of research studies that have been done on the impact of family engagement uh, in, in every, every imaginable subcontext of education, from preschool through high school and everything in between. Um, but I often talk with my staff uh, about return on investment. I use two words that irritate my staff. One is evidence. Uh, when we have an idea, what is the evidence that it's going to work, and what is the return on investment? If we invest this money in this program, what do we expect to get out of it, and how are we going to measure it? And so I often find myself having to defend family engagement because it's seen as a soft variable. Uh, there's no hard data. Well, actually there is, and if we had more time today, we could talk about it. So it's not really a soft variable. Actually, research has told us that when you isolate the variable of family engagement, uh, you have probably read studies that say when you isolate it and separate it by itself, you don't see the correlation to student achievement. However, when you embed family engagement among those other variables that we know to be true in student achievement, the achievement levels are higher in those situations than where it is not. Every educational reform platform, program, or framework that I have ever seen or read has a family engagement component in it. Um, every company that comes through, every private entity that comes through, uh, every organization that says pay us money and we will improve your school will share with you a framework and I guarantee you somewhere in that framework it will share the idea that engaging more families in the educational lives of their children will bring about better results in your school. So. Uh, what teacher doesn't want any of these things? When I speak to our own teachers, uh, you know, they think I'm a little bit of a fuller brush salesman. They say, well, you're trying to trick us. I'm really not trying to trick you. I'm just saying that we know these things can happen uh, if we believe in the concept of engaging families. So I wanted to share with you an idea before we get to some of the, to some of the strategies. And, and this is uh, Ron Edmonds. And many of us remember Ron Edmonds. Um, I happened to be uh, uh, in Prince William County at the time, years ago when I was first exposed to these ideas uh, and have been reading and very interested in effective schools and the work that Dr. Edmonds did. And he said this, he said, well, we can teach any children, any child, whenever and wherever we can, uh, teach any child whose education is of interest to us. We already know more than we need to do in order to do this. Whether we do it or not depends on how we feel about the fact that we haven't done it yet. 
Uh, and it's a very famous quote that's used in workshops, and it gets people to think, and you talk about what is he saying, and what does he mean, and do we care, and all these kinds of things. But here's the more interesting quote that he used right after he said that, that most people don't see. And in 1970s, he said, I submit that you have reasons of your own for preferring to believe that basic pupil performance derives from family background instead of school response to family background. Ladies and gentlemen, that's probably one of the most important statements in the family engagement business that has ever been, that has ever been uttered by anybody because it really is the crux of the issue. It's the, the issue is not students from families, uh, these families can't learn, but it's our perception and our response to particular families. And that can be changed, and that can be altered, and that can be redeveloped and redesigned and reimagined. Next, I want to share with you the importance of a definition. I've been to, I've had the pleasure, I've actually been blessed to travel all over the world and meet and work with people on this topic. And it's amazing to me the different attitudes and the different experiences that people have with families, and it ultimately results in different definitions of what family engagement is. In some schools, family engagement is volunteerism. In some schools, family engagement is raising money. In some schools, family engagement is come to back to school night and don't ever come back until we call you again. <laughs> and so uh, it seemed to me then that we needed, in our own school system, um, a definition. And it's the degree to which families are engaged or empowered, the efficacy of families to have a hand in their own child's learning. Are they truly a partner in their learning? And can we change those questions? I would submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the, that the, the, thing, the way to think about family engagement is this. Those very first two questions that I asked you, what if you could change those questions in the homes of your kids? What if a child walked through the door and the parent didn't have to ask, what did you do in school today? What if they were able to say, show me the paper that's due tomorrow? Tell me what the order of operations is. It's extremely simple to give that information to families. Uh, and when you begin those discussions at home, when you empower families to be able, they don't have to know the order of operations. They just have to know to ask their child. And suddenly, the amount of vocabulary in the home that we heard was woefully inadequate isn't so inadequate anymore. Suddenly there's changes. Suddenly we begin to see improvements and we start to see the train going down the track the right way. So the definition of, of what this work is is extremely important. And it holds true for community engagement as well. Whatever your, whatever your focus is in the community, um, we always say conceptualize the role of community engagement. We often are wanting community partners. We gotta get community partners. Let's get community and business partners. Why? What is it you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? What's, what's the return on investment? What do we want to have tangibly at the end of this partnership? What's in it for me? What's in it for you? Bless you to everybody who is, who is uh, <laughs> uh, perhaps there'll be a flu shot at lunch for all of you. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about the process and we'll get into some strategies before the time is up. There is a process to engagement. Um, it's not something that is, is haphazard. It's not a bunch of strategies that we throw at the wall and hope that they stick. It does start without understanding the culture of your organization. What do you believe in value about families? What do you believe in value about the relationships and the communication between those families? How do you empower those families? What is their role in the decision making of your school or school division? In, uh, and, then, and then what is the greater community's role in helping all of that happen? It's a hierarchy. Um, it, starts at, it starts at culture and moves around the wheel clockwise. Um, it's a logic model, for lack of a better term, because if we have, uh, let me give you one very quick example why this logic model makes, should hopefully make sense. If we believe uh, that family engagement, if we don't believe that family engagement is important and we've done enough research to know that there's enough educators out there who don't put a lot of value in this topic, then the chances of them the chances of them desiring to build relationships with disengaged families is, isn't very good. So if I stand up in front of a group of people who don't buy what I'm selling 
and say, I want you to build relationships with families because we know that that's going to improve student achievement, the likelihood of that happening is pretty slim. Or the likelihood of being able to sustain it over time is pretty slim. So that's why we start with understanding where the organization is and moving through the process of empowerment and participation and then the greater community. So some ideas now. What, how do you engage disengaged families? And by the way, there's a direct correlation uh, uh, between disengagement and socioeconomics, unfortunately. It's been there for years, and, and, and we've studied it, and, and, and it's, it is what it is. Uh, so how then do we begin to um, close that gap? Well, first of all, we have to understand that the priorities in, in many families' lives, unfortunately, today might not be what we did in school today. It could be food, uh, clothing, heat, lights, a home. Uh, and so there's a, lot, there's a lot on the plates of a lot of our different families in a lot of our different schools. Um, families who don't speak English as a first language, there's a, there's a whole strand of research and a whole strand of opportunity to build better relationships with, with people for whom English is not a first language. Uh, but two big ideas. Anything that we do, um, you will garner more success with families if they see that it's meaningful and relevant to their own children. And so if you send them a flyer and you say we're having math night, most of these, people, most of these families cannot conceptualize the meaning or relevance of that flyer, and they're likely not to come. However, if you reach out to a family and you say, if by attending this event or by participating in what the school would like you to participate, this is what will happen in terms of your child's achievement, you've just made this activity more meaningful and relevant to that parent and you've increased the likelihood that they're going to participate. Let me tell you a story about an urban school system, I won't name it, it's not in the state of Virginia, but we were working with teachers in a, in a major city and they were having significant uh, issues with engaging families uh, in, in this uh, particular section of this major city. And I was very lucky to be a consultant and to be working with these teachers, and we had taught them these processes. And after months and months of these processes, we were on a webinar, and these teachers were almost in tears. And they said, you know, Dr. Constantino, we have implemented everything that you said exactly as you said it, and we, we didn't get the results that we hoped for. And I said, well, the next time I'm there, let's figure out you know, what we can do. So we actually got on the subway and we visited a parent. And we knocked on her door and I said to the parent, and she knew who I, she knew what the school was doing, she knew who the teachers were, she, she sorta knew who I was. And I said, may we come in and ask you a couple of questions? She was very lovely, she said absolutely. She lived in, in a, a, a low income section of the city, very, but a very neat home, a nice lady. I said, you know, the school talked to you, they made a home visit to you, yes. Uh, they did all these things. Uh, they, they gave you subway tokens for you and your family so you could get to the event at school. Yes. They told you that they were going to supply dinner. Yes. They had child care and tutoring so you could bring your other children. They could do their homework. You didn't have to worry about it. Yes. There was simultaneous translation so that if you didn't understand English the very best, you could hear everything that you needed to hear in your own language. Yes. And you knew all of that. And the school reminded you yesterday and you said you were coming. Yes. And I said, could I ask you a question? She said, yes. I said, why didn't you come? And her, she looked at me and she, without hesitation said, because I know what they think of me over there. And that's really the battle that we have when we talk about disengaged families. That's why the relationship piece and the trust piece is so important. Because after all of those strategies that the school had employed, which research tells us are supposed to work, they didn't because the perception of how we valued that parent was still stronger than everything we tried to do. And that's the hardest part of working with families who might be disengaged from their children's learning. And then we know the second idea. Before they come to you, you must go to them. You heard the word home visit this morning. Home visit strikes fears in the hearts of teachers. You can train teachers. You can teach teachers. There was a time in education when home visits was normal. Well, I, I always ask teachers when I speak with them, how many people have been in this business for more than 30 years? They raise their hand. Do you remember a time when we did home visits? Absolutely. Why don't we do them anymore? I don't know. We just don't. There's no time. That's what I also hear, too. There's no time, Steve. You can't ask teachers to do one more thing. If you ask them to do one more thing, they're going to revolt. 
here's a way to sell family engagement. It's not about doing something more. It's about doing what you do differently and looking through a different lens. Take the same amount of time, the same amount of energy, and the same amount of resources that you have and change the way you do things. Look at it from the perspective of a family. Look at the policies and procedures that you have in place and ask yourself, are these conducive to building relationships with all of our families? And if they're not, change them. But you have to start, you have to start somewhere. So, I tried to think of things um, in, in a very short period of time that might be meaningful, that might inspire more conversation on this topic as we go through today, and I know later today we'll, we'll come back to this topic. But focus on message and messenger, how, you family, how families want to communicate, family bulletin boards, designating bilingual family-friendly staff. I was in a school system uh, a couple of months ago that had about 90% of the families they served were Latino, and none of the staff was. The staff was, 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 uh, spoke English, uh, perhaps profane, uh, but did not speak, uh, did not speak Spanish, did not, did not speak another language. And they said, how do we engage? And one of the things that we have learned from um, research is that when families have to ask for translation, that can be a barrier, and they often won't ask for it, which will keep them from the school. And, and one of the ideas was to simply put a button on your, uh, who, get some parents, volunteers, or get somebody who speaks the language, or if there is somebody who speaks the language, just put a button that says, yo habla espanol, and stand by the door. Kind of like Walmart. And when somebody sees that, they can immediately start a conversation in a language that they're comfortable with, and they didn't have to ask for translation. It's a, it's a much different perception that that person has of your organization than if they come in and they have to struggle to communicate and struggle to, struggle to find somebody to communicate. So that's one of a thousand ideas that, that are used in schools around the country, buddy systems, networking opportunities, student demonstrations of their learning, and to link everything you do to learning. Uh, I get a lot of calls from PTAs that say, you know, nobody comes to our PTA meeting. It's the same five people. The PTA president is now 75 years old. She's in her 47th year of being president. Uh, you know, what do we do? Link it to learning. Link the PTA meeting to something that is happening in school because it's more meaningful and relevant to parents and they're likely to give you that time. Remember, human beings will make time for whatever they think is important. And if they don't give you the time, don't take it personally and don't assume they're apathetic. It just didn't, it didn't meet their radar in terms of meaningful uh, meaning and relevance. Next, uh, we have this idea of personalizing issues for families. And I'm, again, I'm not here to read this list to you, uh, kind of absorb through these things, one-to-one uh, -one connections, family. One of my pet peeves is the use of the phrase parent slash guardian. Uh, I just don't like that because I think it's a step above dear occupant. Um, I also, you also need to know from a research standpoint, nationally speaking, and I don't have any numbers for Virginia, but nationally speaking in most urban centers, when you use the word parent, you may have alienated up to 50% of the adult caregivers of students. And so one of the things that we try to do is to simply use the word family, covers everybody, even if it's a foster family or Department of Social Services, it's that child's family that week. And, and that might change next week, and it might change the, the week after that. So a little pet peeve. Uh, events smaller, do things more than once. If you have something that's really important, then do it two or three times and give people options so that if they can't come Tuesday night, you're gonna repeat it Thursday, repeat it Saturday, put it on video, put it on the website, do something so that there's multiple opportunities. The last thing I'll say to you about, about what we learn from disengaged families as we have talked to them and, and researched them over time is that one of the ways in which we shoot ourselves in the foot with regard to relationships is that we tell a family, I'm gonna use Mark as an example, Mark is a parent that I want to attend this particular uh, event. And so I hammer into Mark's head how important it is that he come to this event. Just like this lady in the city that I shared with you. We told you and told you and told you and we gave you, we gave you bus tokens and we did everything and we had dinner and it's, you've got to be here. It's critical that you come. Mark understands, he nods his head, yes, something in his life got in his way and he didn't show up to the meeting. And here's what most schools do when that happens. Ready? Nothing. And the actual message you've sent to the parent is, wasn't that important? So the, what to do there is when you want, really want someone to come and they don't attend, call them up. 
and don't judge them. Don't say, where were you? You know, I, I had cookies and you weren't here. You know, who's going to eat them? But simply say, I'm really sorry that you couldn't come, but the information that I have is still very important. How can I get it to you? Uh, it's just the way we do things. It's just a difference in the way we look, looking at things through a little bit of a different lens, understanding that to engage the disengaged takes a little bit more thought, a little bit more effort, but it can be done. And we see, we see success stories all over the country of schools, uh, whether they are urban, rural, suburban, uh, high poverty, low poverty, uh, the, the issues are the same. 50% of the parents who are engaged with their children in grade six are no longer engaged with their children in grade nine. So we have adolescent issues that we, we deal with, and so parent and family engagement and community engagement starts to change as children get over. It do doesn't go away. It's not supposed to go away. We're not supposed to stand back and say, well, you know, they're old enough to be responsible now. Well, my son is 29, and he's almost old enough to be responsible now. Uh, but the way we engage. The last idea I'll leave with you, too, uh, and I start uh, today by saying to you, um, that you know, engaging uh, engaging families is is um, a little bit more difficult than some. It's not a strategy. I wish I wish it were simple. I wish there were a book of strategies uh, that you could take and slap onto your organization and make everything wonderful in a minute. Uh, it's we're dealing with people and we're dealing with building relationships. However, I promise you that of all of those families that you're thinking of in your school district that you want to be engaged, they want to be too. There was a wonderful book written in the late 80s, I think, and the name of the book was Raising Self-Reliant Children in a Self-Indulgent World. And uh, it was a, a really an interesting book, and I don't know if it's still in print or not, but. If it is, uh, or if you can get a copy of it, it really is a fascinating book, and I think it's as relevant today as it was when it was written. But there's a paragraph in that book that um, really has dominated my thinking for a long time, and that's this. It said that every parent or family member of a child, regardless of their socioeconomic station in life, regardless of their ethnic background, regardless of their own experiences in school, Want, for their, want their children to exceed them in their quality of life. That is the one thing that every one of these families has in common. They've, they're scared. And we are unfortunately at a point in our society where when I grew up, it was easy for me to exceed my parents in their quality of life. It is not as easy for my son to exceed me in my quality of life. And that brings about great fear. And anger is a mask for fear. And so if we can tap into families, if we can find these strategies and make these things work, and I know there's hundreds of great ideas already sitting in this room, you can start to leverage and measure that and start to attach that to the achievement of all students. So there's a 30-minute whirlwind tour uh, of a topic, and uh, I very much appreciate having this opportunity to speak to all of you, and I am certainly here all day long. We're going to have a conversation about this later today, uh, but anything that we can do to support you and learn from you, learn about the great ideas that you have going in your school districts already, I think that would be uh, wonderful for all of us. So thank you very much.